The headliners for today's early edition at 6 are these. China is fearful that U.S.-led that missile defense system could pose a threat to their interests, while the U.S. worries the China-led AIIB could easily overpower their financial institutions. Does Korea have the power to mediate? And President Park Geun-hye meets the leaders of the ruling and opposition parties to discuss the economy, inter-Korean relations, and much more. It's the first meeting between the president and the new opposition party leader. Remember, be good to the elderly because they could one day be your primary clients. With age comes not only wisdom but spending power as senior citizens of the 21st century are healthier and more active. These and more coming right up. It's 6 in the evening on Tuesday, March 17th here in Korea. You're watching Early Edition at 6. I'm Na Hyun Gyeong. And I'm Daniel Tre. Thank you for joining us. Stuck between a rock and a hard place, place is Korea. Officials from China and the U.S. are holding back-to-back -back talks with South Korea this week. That's right. In today's meeting with Seoul Ministry Foreign Ministry officials, U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Daniel Russell commented on a Chinese official's remarks from yesterday. It's a seesaw battle, back and forth affair. Arirang's Foreign Affairs Ministry correspondent Hwang Sung-hee starts us off. Just a day after China voiced concerns over the possible deployment of the Thought missile defense system in South Korea, the United States said China doesn't have a say in the matter. Well, I find it curious that uh, a third country would uh, presume to uh, make strong representations about a security uh, system that has not been uh, put in place and that is uh, still a uh, matter of theory. Chinese Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs Liu Jianchao told reporters in Seoul on Monday that China hopes South Korea will consider Beijing's concerns before deploying the U.S.-led missile defense system. Beijing is against the deployment over concerns that the radar system, which can cover 1,000 kilometers, could be used to monitor mainland China. But following talks with senior South Korean officials in Seoul on Tuesday, U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Daniel Russell said that is purely for countering North Korean threats and that its deployment is up to South Korea. It is um, for the Republic of Korea uh, to decide uh, what measures uh, it will take in its own alliance defense and when. The U.S. envoy remained wary about Seoul's participation in China's Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank saying Beijing should first ensure the transparency of the new financial institution. So every government can make its own decision about uh, whether the way to achieve that goal is by joining before the articles of agreement are clarified or by waiting uh, to see what the evidence looks like as the bank starts to operate. If South Korea wants to join the AIIB as a founding member, it must confirm its membership by the end of this month. Now, with the clock ticking, Seoul seems to have found itself in a tough spot between its closest partners. Hwang sang Arirang News. And North Korea had something to say about the alleged deployment of THAAD to South Korea as well. It blamed the U.S. for stoking tensions on the Korean Peninsula. North Korea's ruling Workers' Party newspaper, the Rodong Shimun, said Tuesday that the U.S. is doing this on purpose so that it can justify its actions of deploying the missile defense system in the Asia-Pacific. The Daily also accused Washington of wanting to become a main strategic power in the region and condemned the ongoing Korea-U.S. training military drills. It called the exercise a war game conducted to purposely heighten tensions on the Korean Peninsula. And going back to the China-led investment bank, Washington's concerns may be growing as many Western countries have and continue to line up to join China's initiative. Connie Kim reports. 
Concern is growing in Washington as a number of countries are lining up to join the China-led Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Following Britain's decision to join the AIIB last week, France, Germany and Italy announced that they will also take part in the new institution. With the decision, a total of 31 nations have now agreed to join, building muscle from the initial 21 nations that signed up from the beginning. Initially, Australia and South Korea had decided to take a wait-and-see approach, but with big European nations jumping on board, Australia now says it's carefully reviewing its options. Meanwhile, Seoul is expected to announce its plans within its end-of-March deadline. Washington is worried Beijing's new bank could negatively affect U.S.-based institutions. Watchers say the AIIB, which was launched last year by China, is a counterbalance to the U.S.-led World Bank and the Japan-led Asian Development Bank. Not surprisingly, Japan also opposes the AIIB. Tokyo is one of the biggest shareholders in the ADB, meaning it's permitted to make key decisions. China, meanwhile, holds about a 5 percent share in the ADB. Chinese President Xi Jinping has said the new bank will improve global financial governance. Beijing is expected to push to expand its existence in the financial arena, reflecting China's rising global economic influence. The world's second largest economy also plans to create a new development bank that could stand alongside traditional institutions, such as the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. Connie Kim, Arirang News. A U.N. special rapporteur in North Korea has called for an investigation into the many North Koreans working abroad in what he characterized as slave-like conditions. A Seoul-based human rights group says the workers are forced to make foreign currency for the cash-strapped Kim Jong-un regime. Here's our Shin Se-min. The United Nations human rights investigator for North Korea said he will look into allegations that 20,000 North Koreans are working in slave-like conditions in countries like China, Russia and the Middle East. Marzuki Deruzman, the UN Special Rapporteur on North Korea, told Reuters the workers are, quote, bonded laborers or slave laborers who receive poor compensation for working long hours. NK Watch, a Seoul-based human rights group, says roughly 100,000 workers are sent overseas to 40 countries and make some 3 billion U.S. dollars in foreign currency every year for the Kim Jong-un regime. There was no reason given for the discrepancy in the estimated numbers of workers. The human rights group also called for an investigation into host countries' involvement in the program. This isn't the first time the practice has surfaced. Activists say North Korea has been using its manpower to make money for the Kim regime since the 1980s, with some of the money being spent on luxury goods. But the practice has been accelerating under the current leadership as the number of North Korean workers abroad is said to have increased by 35,000 since 2012, based on figures from the New York Times and NK Watch. Activists say the practice may have increased because of tighter international sanctions on the regime that have prompted it to seek new sources of revenue. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. In an unprecedented move, North Korea asked the heads of South Korean companies operating at the Inter-Korean Industrial Complex in Kaesong to gather for a meeting that was scheduled for earlier in the day. No specifics about the meeting were announced, and the South Korean government asked the company heads not to respond to Pyongyang's call. Instead, the South Korean government held a meeting in Seoul this afternoon with most of the leaders of companies from that complex. Seoul discussed possible countermeasures and urged the leaders not to abide by Pyongyang's one-sided demands. Watchers believe the meeting was Pyongyang's way of pressuring the South Korean companies to go along with its unilateral decision to raise wages for its workers from a little over 70 U.S. dollars to 74 dollars a month and revise labor regulations. North Korea is believed to be the culprit behind recent data leaks from South Korea's nuclear power plants. Last year, a group of hackers leaked documents about the facilities, including blueprints, and last week they released additional files and demanded money in return for not selling the information to other countries. An interim probe found that the incidents were aimed at inciting social unrest. Investigators added that the leaked data was not critical information and that it was obtained by hacking the email and online communities used by former officials of the Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power Company rather than directly from the operator's network. The probe also found that malicious codes used in the cyber attacks were similar to those used by North Korea and the IP addresses were 
based in the north. President Park Geun-hye has asked the leaders of the ruling and opposition parties for their cooperation in ensuring the implementation of deals signed with Middle Eastern countries during her recent trip. This to help revive the local economy. Now sitting down with her presidential election rival Moon Jae-in, who's now the opposition party leader, she, for the first time officially in two years, she stressed that her administration's policies can only be materialized with parliamentary support. Moon promised that support, but did point out that in his opinion, the government failed to improve Korean people's livelihoods with its economic and welfare policies. He then urged the government to adopt a policy of increasing household income to spur domestic demand. Moon also said Seoul should first seek to boost economic cooperation with Pyongyang and make efforts to hold an inter-Korean summit sometime this year. And before that three-way meeting, the president presided over a cabinet meeting. There, she stressed the importance of rooting out corruption in Korean society. Meeting with some of the new cabinet members for the first time, she said, if illicit practices are left untouched, they will hinder efforts to revitalize the domestic economy. She then urged and asked the prime minister to push ahead with his crackdown on corruption. The president is thought to have reaffirmed her determination in response to recent irregularities in the defense industry, the reduction of duty in overseas resources development, and the creation of slush funds and embezzlement by some conglomerates. Business face a one-day entry ban. Digging deeper, getting to the bottom of stories that impact your life, talking with you on air and online. Connecting you with experts on the world's most pressing issues. News and current affairs at its best. With Na Hyung Kyung and Daniel Che. Arirang News. Arirang News. Arirang News. Arirang News. On early edition at 6. The Korean government's policy changes, the central bank's key rate to cut, all aimed at generating momentum for Korea's economic recovery. But most indicators are still pointing to a slowing economy. Some experts fear Korea will log a sixth consecutive 0.0% range growth rather in the first quarter of this year. Our Song ji -san has more. It's barely managing to hover above zero. The Korean economy is likely to log another 0% range growth for a sixth straight quarter inching closer to a nine-quarter record logged between 2011 and 2013. Oil prices may be cheap, but domestic consumption is not catching up, and real economic indicators are showing the telltale signs of a slowing economy. Mining and manufacturing production shrunk at the fastest rate in six years in January, and consumer inflation is also hovering at the 0% range for the third straight month. If the first quarter marks expansion of less than 1%, the Korean economy is likely to settle in the low 3% growth range for the whole of 2015. Foreign investment banks have already downwardly revised their outlook, with some predicting growth in the 2% range. Domestic research institutes are also reportedly ready to adjust their figures. After slashing the key interest rate to an all-time low of 1.75% last week, Korea's central bank also hinted that its 3.4% growth outlook will be downgraded in its next forecast in April. Song ji -sun, Arirang News. For job seekers here in Korea, a college degree may not be the ultimate weapon, especially when it comes to competing with high school graduate rivals. According to a report released by LG Economics Research Institute today, more college graduates are jobless than those with high school diplomas. While the unemployment rate for high school grads dropped 0.2 percentage points from 2005 to 8.9% last year. The rate rose for those out of college from 6% to a near 10%. Analysts say this is largely due to the lack of quality jobs college graduates strive for. They also say employers, including big companies, are hiring a larger proportion of high school graduates, which is in line with the government's efforts to offer more job opportunities to that particular group. In the tech realm, Samsung Electronics has announced a new strategy for helping businesses adapt in the era of the Internet of Things, a phenomenon where everything we touch or interact with is connected to the World Wide Web. Our Kim ji has this report. 
Korean tech giant Samsung Electronics has laid out a new strategy for helping businesses integrate the Internet of Things into their operations. It's providing business-to-business -business solutions in the areas of retail, education, hospitality, healthcare, finance, and transportation. At the Sabit Computer Expo in Hanover on Monday, the company's president and chief marketing officer, Hong Wan Pyo, announced the creation of Samsung Business. He says the brand will help businesses boost productivity with tailored solutions for saving energy and inventory management. Samsung Business will unify previous B2B solutions, including its Knox security platform and a smart signage display system to help enterprises adopt the Internet of Things. Hong added, though, that the company needs to overcome major challenges to accelerate IoT adoption, namely platform compatibility, data analysis and security. Until now, the tech giant's IoT services have targeted the average consumer with smart health and smart home devices. The company is also trying to gain a competitive advantage in the sector through faster connectivity. It set a goal of connecting all of its products and devices through fifth-generation networks, which is 1,000 times faster than 4G LTE by 2020. Kim Jung, Arirang News. Life begins at 50 or even 60 for some here in Korea thanks to medical advancements and a growing interest in health and fitness. People are staying more active even in what was once considered to be old age. That means the nation's soon-to-be seniors are becoming one of society's major consumer groups. Our Kim min -ji has this story. After working 20 years at an insurance company, Pyongyang Do now spends most of his time outdoors. He's taken up photography as a hobby and even invested $500 in a new camera. I'm living for myself, doing the things I've always wanted to do. I don't have any debt or major bills, so I spend about a third of my monthly allowance on myself. Pyan is one of the country's so-called active seniors. In Korea, active seniors are people that are socially and economically active and willing to spend money to improve the quality of their lives. Unlike generations before them, a growing number of Koreans in their 50s and 60s aren't relying on their children for financial support. They are independent and have disposable incomes. And they're spending big on leisure activities and buying up items like cameras, art supplies and outdoor gear, and even paying for continued education. Now that my children are grown up, I have time to spend my money and enjoy my own life. I play the guitar and take singing lessons. So what's made them different from their predecessors? Many members of the baby boomer generation are well-educated, had good-paying jobs and were able to save up. They were the main consumers during Korea's industrialization period and have more interest in leisure, fashion and health than seniors of the past. Data shows consumers aged 50 to 64 spent $40 billion in 2010, and in five years, their buying power is expected to triple. Experts say this comes as more than 80 percent of them return to the job market after retirement to pursue the work they were passionate about when they were younger. Kim min -ji, Arirang News. Among the growing number of Chinese visitors to Korea, almost half of them chose Jeju Island as their travel destination in 2014. Data compiled by various travel organizations say the portion of Chinese visitors traveling to Jeju jumped from about 40 percent from 2013 to over 45 percent last year. The organizations attribute the rise to Jeju being the only place in Korea that allows Chinese tourists to to enter without a visa. It's also a popular filming location for many Korean dramas, which attracts a lot of fans from China. The number of Chinese travelers to Jeju Island is expected to grow even more this year to more than 3.3 million. Now gone are the days when candidates in any elections campaigned with posters and leaflets. Now they're jumping on the social media bandwagon to draw in potential young supporters. Kwon Soa takes a look. As Korea's rival parties gear up for April's by-elections, they're trying to win the hearts of young voters through more novel campaign methods than the usual posters and leaflets. This teaser shows a young unemployed man complaining about his situation, when suddenly the ruling Senuri Party's chairman appears in front of him. 
괜찮아요. 많이 놀랬죠? It's an advertisement for an application naming contest. It's hoped the app will boost young people's participation in the political process. The main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy is using webtoons as a means of explaining hot political issues in an easy-to-digest way. We're doing this in an effort to not let complicated policies be discussed only at the National Assembly, but to connect with young voters. Due to high social network service penetration, these video clips and digital comics spread quickly, making it easier for the parties to spread their vision to the younger generation. But there are concerns about whether this is the best way to go about campaigning. When young people look at content on SNS or webtoons, they simply enjoy it and they don't take it that seriously. That's why there needs to be a more thorough understanding of cultural phenomena and young people's opinions, especially when the subject matter is so heavy and important. Some say that rather than focusing too much on how to make themselves more likable, the parties should come up with practical strategies to tackle the biggest problems facing young people in Korea, such as the high youth unemployment rate. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Korea has hosted a diverse range of plays and now the Korean theater community is aiming to expand with new talent and more original plays. Our Im Yoon Hee has a look at two new plays being put on here in Seoul. Take a look. There's been an accident. But whose fault is it? The fox or the human? It's even harder to distinguish which is the fox and which is the human. The original Korean play, The Human Fox, has a Mobius strip-like structure, with no seeming end or beginning, to this ever-ongoing cycle. The play boasts a creative staff made up of some of the leading Korean figures in the industry. Written by one of Korea's leading playwrights, Lee Kang Baek, it's a thought-provoking play that brings a little mystery and a lot of laughter to its audience. I get frustrated when I'm not myself, and that frustration for others as well, because it's an endless cycle, a repetition of the past, and the inability to move on to the future. Another new original Korean play to recently hit the stage, but this production has more of a fantastical flair. The comedy crime thriller sets a stage suited to its name. There's a large glowing bull at the center of attention. And although it's considered a play, with all the flashing lights, special effects and a live band, it's more like a spectacular variety show. It's okay to enjoy this production without a single thought in mind. But at the same time, while watching it, the fluid gauge will open, and many different thoughts and ideas may come into your mind. But beneath the fun and games, the play also has a serious side, offering the audience a range of different emotions. Original Korean plays still have room to grow, but with plenty of creativity and talent to go around, they're sure to make a splash in the future. Im Yoon Hee, Arirang News. I really like the title of the play in Korean. It's really long, right? But in English, they need to come up with a briefer, more catchy title. But that's just my suggestion. I'm sure the director had his heart in it. Of course. And now it's time to talk about weather. It was a pretty mild condition today, but really cloudy, like it was going to rain any time here in the capital. Well, I mean, we do have rain in the forecast for tomorrow, and it's also going to be another day with high levels of fine dust. Yes, unfortunately, although we can shed some outer layers, we need to put something on our face, masks, to make sure we are breathing easy today after that for details and more updates on the weather let's turn to our michelle Bach at the weather center michelle good evening guys the air quality was poor all day today especially here in the capital now the levels have dropped compared to the morning uh, but dust levels are still pretty high at 83 micrograms per cubic meter here in seoul now the sky is getting cloudier and cloudier as well and that will bring down some rain on jeju island and the southern regions tonight 
And this rain is expected to expand nationwide Wednesday through Thursday morning, but mild temperatures will still be with us even after the rain. Now, the rain will be focused mainly on the southern provinces, which can expect up to 60 millimeters. Seoul, Gyeonggi-do, and Gaon-do can expect up to 5 to 10 millimeters, while the rest of the central region can expect up to 30. So make sure to have your umbrellas handy if you are going outside tomorrow and for the whole day. Now, taking a look at the readings for tomorrow, so we'll start off the Wednesday morning at 10 and get up to 15 in the afternoon, while the southern regions such as Daegu and Busan will top higher at 11 and 13 degrees. Moving over to other regions, Jeju Island gets up to 20, while Tokyo hits to 11, while Mount Kungang dips low to 4 degrees. Well, that's all for now. I'm Michelle Park, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you for that, Michelle. That's the wrap. That's a wrap for us for this edition, early edition at six. That is why am I stumbling so much what today? What is wrong with you it today? It is a mystery. <laughs> it's time to hit the rocking chair, maybe. Well, thank you for watching. Have a great start to your day or a safe drive home. This has been Daniel Chen. And I'm Nai Hyun Gyeong. See you again tomorrow. Goodbye for now.